What is going on everybody? Thank you so much for tuning into the Half Court Report YouTube channel today. My name is Troy and I love this time of year because it is draft season. That means it is time for mock draft 3.0. I am doing all 30 picks in the first round. So make sure you like this video and make sure you are subscribed to this channel. I am one of the very, 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 very few YouTube channels that does all 30 picks. So without further ado, let's get into it. Thanks to our friends at Tankathon, I have done a randomized order for the lottery. So the first pick is gonna be made by the Portland Trailblazers, and they are going with Alex Saar. He is a 7-1 French center, most recently played in Australia. 7-5 wingspan, has comparisons to players like Nick Claxton, Jaron Jackson Jr., Evan Mobley. If everything checks out with him, he's still very young, very raw, only played 18 minutes per game for his team in Australia, and he came off the bench. So when you look at the numbers on the screen there, they don't really pop off the page for what you would expect to get with a top pick, but you are drafting him for his defense and hope that his offense will catch up eventually. As I mentioned, could be a defensive player of the year kind of player, but I like the fit in Portland. Is DeAndre Ayton the answer at center? I don't know if he is. Then you have the defense of Alex Saar at the four, the offense and the rebounding of Ayton at the center spot. Two seven-footers. Pick number two is gonna be made by the Memphis Grizzlies. They are going with Reed Shepard. He is a guard from the University of Kentucky. This is a guy when you look at him, maybe a little undersized, not an elite athlete, but he's a smart player. He's a dog on the court and one of the best shooters in this class. He has a very quick release, lethal from beyond the arc, over 50% from three for the season. He has that type of skill-based game that relies on being a shot maker and a playmaker. He does a good job of moving the ball, finding open teammates defensively. He's a pest on the ball as well. Gets a lot of steals, over two a game. So I've got him going to Memphis in this draft, but I think there is a good chance Memphis moves this pick because they are trying to contend next season. They've had a lot of injuries this year, so they may move this pick for veteran help. But if they pick Reed Shepard, I think he could slide into that Luke Kennard role. I even wonder if he could be a Marcus Smart replacement in a couple of years. Pick number three gonna be made by the Toronto Raptors. They are going with Zachary Rizache. That's just a fun name to say. But he is a 6'9 forward, 200 pounds, also out of France. He's got a quick release on his jumper that's hard to guard. He moves well off the ball, gets to his spots. He's a good cutter. Gonna be one of the youngest players in this year's draft. Big question with him is his lack of shot creation. He doesn't have a super quick first step either, so I think he projects more like your fourth or fifth starter on a good team. The Raptors, though, they're getting their core together, and Zachary Rizache fits what they're doing. Pick number four, gonna be made by the Houston Rockets. They are going with Nikola Topic. 6'6 guard from Serbia, super young for this draft as well. He won the MVP of the 2023 Under-18 European Championship last summer. Great court vision, high basketball IQ, smooth jumper, but he does need to be a little more consistent with it. Needs to work on his defense, but there is a lot to like with Topic. He's been injured for the last few months, since January actually, so that's a bummer for those who have been wanting to see him play and improve. But he would be a solid pickup for the Rockets. Maybe that long-term piece in the backcourt that makes a Jalen Green trade easier to do as well. Pick number five, gonna be made by the Detroit Pistons, and I have them selecting Dalton Connect. He's a wing out of the University of Tennessee. Is he the Jimmer Fredette? of this generation. He is super talented as an offensive player, shoots the cover off the ball from anywhere, but he is bigger than Jimmer. More athletic too. His defense isn't NBA level, so he does need to work on that, but when he catches fire offensively, Dalton Connect is one of the most mesmerizing players to watch in college basketball. I think Detroit would love him. They need shooting around Cade, and I think he is a great fit for what they're trying to do. Pick number six, gonna be made by the Washington Wizards. Rob Dillingham is the pick. He's a teammate of Reed Shepard out of Kentucky. 
Also came off the bench along with Reed, but he's a pure athlete, blazing speed, great hops, just electric on the court, plays above the rim, handles the ball well, creates for himself and for others, just all around solid point guard, 44% from three, maybe a Darius Garland or Lou Williams type of player if things all come together for him. And Kentucky guards, they tend to do well in the pros. And Washington, I think now you have your starting point guard with Rob Dillingham. Pick number seven gonna be made by the San Antonio Spurs. I have them selecting Ron Holland, who most recently played for the G League Ignite. Six seven forward, he was the number one recruit in the class of 2023 and also very young player for this draft. Super athletic, good motor, really aggressive, does need to work on his shooting, needs to make the right decisions on the floor more often than what he does. He does have a lot of turnovers, but there is lots of room for growth with Ron Holland. I legit think that he can be a Jimmy Butler type of player if he's put into the right situation, and the Spurs are a great place for him to develop and be their long-term small forward down the line, potentially. Pick number eight gonna be made by the Charlotte Hornets, and I have them selecting Stefan Castle out of UConn. He's a 6'6 wing. Castle has improved as the season has gone on. He impacts the game with his defense, with his passing, and just being a solid connective piece. I think he can fit into a lot of different lineups. His jumper needs to come around a little bit, but if it does, you're looking at one of the best players in this draft. I love him for Charlotte. He compliments LaMelo Ball really well in the backcourt, and I think he compliments Brandon Miller on the wing. Pick number nine, gonna be made by the Utah Jazz, and Matas Buzelis is the pick. Ron Holland's teammate out of the G League Ignite. So with Buzelis, you're getting a really long player who has a lot of skills. He can be plugged into multiple positions on the court, whether it's as a three or as a four. He's 6'11". He's skinny, only about 200 pounds, so he'll need to put on some weight and fill out a bit, but he handles the ball like a guard. He shoots it well from outside. He is a little inconsistent, but he's also a solid rebounder and gets a good amount of blocks too. I just think there's a lot to like about Modest Buzelas as an NBA prospect. Just as I mentioned, a little more consistency is needed, but Utah, they have time to bring him along. Pick number 10, gonna be made by the Atlanta Hawks, and I have them selecting Kyle Filipowski, big man from Duke. Seven feet, about 250 pounds. He can shoot it from the perimeter. He can attack closeouts. He can bring the ball up the court in a grab and go type of situation. I like that his passing has taken a nice little leap this season and he's more comfortable as he's reading the floor. He's not gonna kill you defensively. And I think since the Hawks are a little thin in the front court, he would be a really talented big man for them to select. Kyle Filipowski at a Duke. And pick number 11 gonna be made by the Chicago Bulls. Let's stay with the Duke theme, and Jared McCain is my pick here. 6'3 freshman, I think he is being slept on because I really like his game. Started out slow when the season began, but I think he does end up as a lottery pick or just outside of the lottery by draft night. But he plays hard, I like his game, and right now I see him as a shooter and as a third guard on a team. I would like to see him be a little bit more of a playmaker if he's going to end up being a lead guard. But I think with Chicago and so many questions they have regarding their backcourt, I think Jared McCain is a good selection here. Pick number 12 going to be made by the Oklahoma City Thunder via the Houston Rockets. And they are going with Donovan Klingon out of UConn, Stefan Castle's teammate. This guy is enormous, 7'2", like 260 pounds. He was a big reason UConn has had such a great season this year in the NCAA. But you are drafting Klingon with the hope that he can be a Walker Kessler or Brooke Lopez type of player. He dominates the paint with his size, huge frame, physical center who makes the right reads when the defense collapses. On a permanent basis, one of the most effective players in college ball. Mountain of a man, he can bang inside while Chet stretches the floor, and the defense on this team would be out of this world with Donovan Klingon. The biggest issue for him is injury concern, so that would be the one thing you have to watch out for. Pick number 13, it's the Trailblazers again, this one via the Golden State Warriors. They are selecting Cody Williams out of Colorado. I just talked about the Thunder and you know, Jalen Williams, who plays for OKC, this is actually his brother. But Cody Williams, he's good at getting the ball to his spots, using his length on defense to guard multiple positions. 
And as we all know, there is value in long and versatile wings in the NBA draft. So Cody ticks a lot of boxes in that area as to what scouts are looking for. As I've said, with a lot of these guys, needs to be a little more consistent and show up every game to make an impact. But Portland, they took Alex Saar at the top, and now they have a wing in Cody Williams. Pick number four, going to be made by the New Orleans Pelicans via the Lakers from the Anthony Davis trade years ago. And they are going with Devin Carter out of Providence. He's a point guard who transferred to Providence this year and just blew up offensively. He was already a good defender. Now he's seen as kind of a two-way player, and I think he's going to be rising up draft boards as we get closer to June. He has low bust potential, in my opinion, and the Pelicans can use another body in the backcourt. So I like Devin Carter. Pick number 15, going to be made by the Philadelphia 76ers, and Jacoby Walter is the pick. He's part jaw. He's part Kobe. He's Jacoby. But seriously, uh, Walter is an instant offensive threat with his shot-making ability and the way that he can stretch the floor. Really good in catch-and-shoot situations with a defender in his face. He's confident. He tries on defense. Maybe not as high of a ceiling as some players in this draft, but I think he has a pretty high floor because he rarely makes mistakes, has a strong feel for the game, plays well within a team concept. The Sixers drafted Tyrese Maxey years ago, later on in the draft, and I think Jacoby could be another diamond in the rough and maybe a future starter next to Maxey for the Sixers in a couple of years. Pick number 16 going to be made by the Miami Heat, and Ryan Dunn is the pick out of the University of Virginia. This guy does it all on defense. Rebounding, blocks, steals, but he is a really bad shooter, basically from everywhere on the floor, even the free throw line. Kind of like Herb Jones, but with a much worse offense right now. But Ryan Dunn just needs loads of shooting improvement, but I think the Heat, they have a track record of developing guys, so this could be one of their biggest hits yet, if it all works out. Pick number 17, gonna be made by the Toronto Raptors via the Pacers. They are going with Tijan Saloon. I've heard Tijan Saloon, Salon, we'll call him Saloon this time around. But he's another player from France, smooth stroke, should have no issues translating that to NBA range. He can attack the rim on cuts and straight line drives. The questions for Saloon are about the feel for the game, but he's super young, worth taking a flyer on due to his potential. I do think he'll be in the G League a lot as a rookie, but Toronto is in asset collection mode. Maybe he can be what Bruno Caboclo never could be for the Raptors. Pick number 18, going to be made by the Atlanta Hawks via the Sacramento Kings, and they are going with Isaiah Collier. Finished up his freshman season at USC. He was the number one guard coming out of high school. Pass first point guard who excels when getting downhill and finding open teammates. Very strong, kind of like a bulldozer out there. Just not an impactful defender, so he does need to work on that. He needs to stay in front of opposing guards and wings. Some questions exist about his feel for the game and how much of a knockdown shooter he can be. Needs to cut down on his turnovers as well, but he is super talented. So getting a guy like Isaiah Collier this late would be a steal for the Hawks. I know they have a lot of guards, but too much talent to pass up with Isaiah Collier. Pick number 19, going to be made by the Phoenix Suns, and Zach Eady is the selection here. If you know anything about college basketball, you know that Zach Eady is a monster. 7'4", 300 pounds. This guy would have been the number one pick 25 years ago, but the NBA has changed. The questions are, can he fit with the modern NBA? Is he too slow? Can he stretch the floor? But I think he's just too good not to be picked in the first round. Low post savant, sets huge screens, great touch around the hoop, gets to the free throw line a ton. I love the idea of him setting just some crazy screens for all those Phoenix shooters. And I think he can contribute right away in other areas for Phoenix as well. Pick number 20, going to be made by the New York Knicks via the Dallas Mavericks and the Chris Topps Porzingis trade of all things from uh, many, many years ago. But they are going with Tristan Da Silva out of the University of Colorado in this mock draft. He's a player who just knows how to play. Big forward, can play the three or the four, six, nine, great floor spacing ability, good decision-making, high IQ. 
a good connective passer who doesn't stall the ball, and he's a solid team defender, would serve as a solid piece on a team like Knicks. And let's stay with the Knicks for pick 21. This is their own pick, and here I have them selecting Johnny Furphy from Kansas by way of Australia. He had an up and down season, but he is super athletic. He shoots it well, he rebounds. Johnny is tough as nails, and he just leaves it all out on the floor. But get him on a team who can develop him the right way. He can be really good because he has shown lots of improvement in the last year, and he is still developing, so he is far, far away from a finished product. And I actually think he might get some minutes on the Knicks because of his hustle. Pick number 22 going to be made by the Orlando Magic. I have them selecting Tyler Smith from the G League Ignite, the teammate of Modest and Ron Holland. He's a 6'11 stretch big who shoots it well, rebounds it well, does need to get stronger. His defense, nothing to write home about, so he's going to take some time in that area. But a former five-star recruit with lots of talent, maybe similar to former Orlando Magic player Richard Lewis. Pick number 23 going to be made by the Cleveland Cavaliers, and I have them selecting Hunter Salas. He is a 6'5 guard from Wake Forest. He played a couple years at Gonzaga and didn't make much of a mark, but since he transferred to Wake Forest, check out those numbers. Had a really solid season, but he's a smooth guard with a lanky frame, good quickness, great handles, good score from the wing, and excels in transition. Not too bad as a defender, doesn't need to get stronger, so a nice developmental piece for Cleveland. Pick number 24, it's the New Orleans Pelicans again, and I have them selecting Eve Messi from Baylor University by way of Cameroon, I believe. But Missy is seven feet tall, 7'5 wingspan, good athlete, rim runner, good shot blocker. He is a project, but one with elite tools, as they say. So if he puts it all together, he can be really good. Otherwise, you might have another Kai Jones type player on your hands, but he is a good pick this late for the Pels. Pick number 25, going to be made by the Washington Wizards via the LA Clippers, and they are selecting Deron Holmes from the University of Dayton. Holmes is a solid interior player who is showing flashes of a perimeter game as well. He protects the rim. He's strong inside. I think he can expand his game even more. And the Wizards need a big man. Holmes is 6'10", 6'11", and he is the best big man still on the board. Pick number 26, the Milwaukee Bucks here are selecting Justin Edwards, teammate of Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham out of Kentucky. Edwards came into the season with high hopes, but he has kind of tumbled down draft boards. But this was the guy who was the number three recruit coming into college. So you draft him hoping that he can get back to that type of player and check the boxes as a three and D type of player at minimum. And maybe if it all works out, a guy with all-star potential. He has the tools that NBA teams love. So I think a good developmental guy to have for Milwaukee. Pick number 27, the Minnesota Timberwolves here are selecting Kaishan George, freshman from the University of Miami. He looks the part of a big NBA wing. He shoots it well, he's a strong passer. There are questions about his body and his athleticism. And he is one of those 3 and D guys that teams like to have on their roster. Minnesota can also afford to let him develop because they do have a lot of guys in front of him. So Kaishan George can spend some time in the G League and hone his skills and maybe down the road he can be a good player for him. Pick number 28, I have the Denver Nuggets selecting Terrence Shannon Jr. from Illinois. Terrence has been in college so long that when I did my mock draft a few years ago, I actually made a graphic for Terrence. Back when he was still at Texas Tech, he ended up pulling out of the draft, but this is a guy I've been keeping an eye on for a long time. But he's a big time athlete, pure wing who can handle, pass, defend, really run the floor. He's a physical player, great defender. He's older, as I mentioned, so he does have all that experience, but the Nuggets need guys to fill out their bench and contribute right away. So I think Shannon would be a good pick for them. Pick number 29, the Utah Jazz via OKC, and they're going with Bobby Clintman 
Kowalski actually put his name in the draft last year when he was a player with Wake Forest, but he pulled out and ended up playing this year in Australia. Originally, he's from Sweden, and there is still a lot of untapped potential with Bobby. He's excellent on the break. He's 6'11", he can handle, make nice passes, stretch the floor a bit. For some reason, I'm getting Anthony Randolph vibes from this guy, do y'all remember him? But maybe it'll work out with Bobby. Good developmental piece, I'm saying that a lot, but a guy who the Jazz can add to their rebuild. And with the final pick of the first round, number 30, the Boston Celtics, they are going with Baylor Shireman from Creighton University, Omaha's finest. Baylor Shireman is just an awesome college player. He's been around for a few years too, very similar to Terrence Shannon. But he has a nice all-around game, really fills up the stat sheet, rebounds really well for his size. He's 6'7", 6'8", and he can handle the ball too. Not a big-time athlete, so he might struggle defending at the next level. But in a league that values shooters, I think he will get some looks in the late first round. And I think he could give Boston some minutes immediately and even down the road be a better version of Sam Hauser. Be sure you drop a like on this video because if I get 500 likes for my next mock draft, I'm going to be doing all 60 picks first and second round. So make sure you do that. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel as well so you never miss another NBA video or draft video from me. Let me know what you think of these picks in the comments and tell me who you want for your team. Check out some of the other videos that I have on the channel by clicking the boxes on the screen and I will see you next time on the Half Court Report. Have a great day, everybody.